Our good shepherd invites us into relationship, relationship with the Trinity. Uh, so this stained glass window here uh, on our screen is from the Chapel of Thanksgiving in Dallas, Texas. And to me, this window just depicts the ever-moving journey of spiritual formation, of Christian formation, of catechesis. This week, our theme for the remainder of our chapels is catechesis as a way of life. Uh, many of you, like me, uh, didn't grow up knowing this term at all. Um, others have been through catechetical formation for years. And as I contemplated how to incorporate the concept of catechesis this week, a chat with our former dean of the chapel, Daryl Harris, prompted me to realize that I had just preached on this theme. So a couple weeks ago, the Sunday after Christmas Day, I preached from the text of Luke 2, where Jesus is 12 years old, and he stayed behind in Jerusalem, and he's chatting up the priests and the scribes, and um, everybody is amazed, and everybody's surprised. And um, also the text then from Samuel, for Samuel, about young Samuel in the temple also, in the synagogue. And um, I mean, in the temple. And the words spoken of Jesus are very similar to the words spoken of Samuel. So of Jesus, Jesus went back to Nazareth with his parents and was obedient to them. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. And of Samuel, after praising his obedience uh, in, of, and morality compared to Eli's sons, the words were, and the boy Samuel continued to grow in stature and in favor with the Lord and with men. So Jesus and Samuel are our healthy models for integrated catechesis. So as you heard on, in the panel discussion, the definition IWS uses of, for catechesis is fully orbed and involves our ongoing formation in mind, heart, relationships, morality, and behavior. Psalm 23, which we sang this morning, has been linked by early church fathers like Justin Martyr and Origen, Oregon, among others, with Christian initiation, with catechesis. So we're using Psalm 23 as a launch pad for the chapel talks this week, considering catechesis as a way of life. Intentionally growing, being formed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. Today, we look at verse 1 of Psalm 23 and consider who it is that has invited us into relationship so that we are able to say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I have everything I need. Our good shepherd invites us into relationship, relationship with the Trinity. In Christian initiation and in all of life, we're ever growing in our knowledge of and relationship with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Japan and many other Asian countries, a business card, or a meishi in Japanese, is essential when making introductions. In the U.S. and in many Western cultures, you may have a business card, but you probably rarely use it. Um, and because I'm currently multivocational, I actually have four business cards that I use depending on who I'm meeting and um, what this person might want to engage with me in. Uh, in Japan, there's an actual ritual for when you present your meishi, and there's bowing, and it's um, the beginning of relationship building in Japan, because it t the meishi tells uh, who you are, what's important to know about you, um, so that the person that you're meeting knows how to interact with you, what language level to use with you, to not embarrass or shame you or themselves. So the business card is very important. The meishi is very important. This Isaiah passage that Anna Marie well, so well presented to us this morning is kind of God's meishi, God's business card. Creator, the Lord, there is no other. Speaker of truth, Savior, incomparable, righteous, strong. Exodus 34, 5 to 7 could just as well be God's business card. Then the Lord came down on the cloud and stood there with him and proclaimed his name, the Lord. He passed in front of Moses proclaiming, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, 
slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Or in the words of the Westminster Larger Catechism, question 17, God is infinite in being, glory, blessedness, and perfection, all-sufficient, eternal, unchangeable, incomprehensible, everywhere present, almighty, knowing all things, most wise, most holy, most just, most merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. So maybe God's Meishi looks something like this. You can create these and not really order them. <laughs> but, but this is God. We know God through the names that God has given to us in the Bible. The words are so important to sit with and digest. So as God hands us Meishi and introduces himself to us, inviting us into relationship with him, the words that the Bible gives us, that scripture gives us, are so important. Our Psalm 23 that we're sitting with little by little this week is used often as a prayer, a prayer of faith stating that what we believe is true, as well as a prayer of trust, hoping that what we're praying is true in our lives and will become true in our lives. The Latin phrase lex orandi lex credendi means the way we pray or worship constitutes the way that we believe, and vice versa. What we believe shapes how we pray and worship. Prayer and belief are integral to each other. So praying Psalm 23 leads us into believing the truth that the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything that I need. And sometimes the words lex vivendi are added to this phrase, and in adding those words, the idea is expanded to mean that how we pray or worship informs what we believe and then becomes apparent in how we live. May what we pray form our beliefs and transform our way of living. Each day I've invited one of our international students who have been able to make it here with us on campus to recite or read Psalm 23 as a prayer in their language to begin our time of prayer. So since we all know this psalm in English, we're skipping that. We just sang it this morning as well. So um, we're going to begin today with inviting Mira from Ukraine to pray Psalm 23 uh, in, in Ukrainian as we begin our time of prayer. So let's stand and prepare our hearts for prayer.